thank you so much for watching. So someone a couple of months ago asked me to do a nice application of the mean value theorem and I thought, well, this is my, much, my favorite application of it. So let me present you to that. Th this path, it has to do with fixed points, which really means if you want crossing the line y equals to x. So suppose you have a function, you know, from 0, 1 to 0, 1. In other words, a function with domain 0, 1, and that's never bigger than 1. It's always between 0 and 1. And the question is, can you draw this without crossing the line y equals to x? Well, of course, because it can't cross the line here, it has to start somewhere here. And then, well, let's try to do this without doing that. And then, of course, you don't want f of 1 to be 1 because it crosses the line. Then the question is, how do you do that? Oh, no, it's not possible. And in fact, let me show that it's not possible. And let me show a little bit more. So, theorem, some kind of fixed point theorem. Suppose f is from 0, 1 to 0, 1, and its derivative is never equal to 1. So, and f prime of x is never equal to 1 for all x in 0, 1. Then f must cross this line exactly once. So it has to cross it at least once, and it cannot cross it twice or more. So then, f must have exactly one fixed point. In other words, a fixed point just means that f crosses this line, which means that f of x equals to x must have exactly one solution. And I always get very excited about this problem, but whenever I ask it to my students, they're never very excited about this. But I hope you won't disappoint me. Because, in fact, it's a very nice application of both of the value theorems. One, the extreme value theorem, and one, sorry, not, sorry, the extreme value theorem is like the black coat. We state it, but we never use it. It's a nice application of the intermediate value theorem and of the mean value theorem. So, here's a proof. So, why? First of all, let's show that this equation must have at least one solution. One solution. And the way we want to do this, we want to take this equation and turn it into an equation that talks about zeros. And for this, let's define a helper function. So let g of x be f of x minus x. And let's see what happens to g of 0 and to g of 1. So g of 0, that's f of 0 minus 0. And that's f of 0. But what do we know about f? f is between uh, 0 and 1, right? So f of x is between 0 and 1. Because the range of f, I guess the codomain is the interval 0 and 1. So in particular, f of 0 has to be greater or equal to 0. Because f of x is always greater or equal to 0. And moreover, let's see about g of 1. That's f of 1 minus 1. But the thing is, Again, f of x is always less than or equal to 1. So f of 1 
is less than or equal to 1. So this whole thing is less than or equal to 1 minus 1, which is 0. Therefore, we have this function g. We know it starts with a point greater or equal to 0, and it ends with a point less than or equal to 0. So maybe let me exaggerate this a little bit. This is 0. This is 1. This is a function g. It's positive here. I guess it's non-negative here and non-positive here. And there's this nice theorem that says, well, the intermediate value theorem says that it has to attain all the points between g and 0 and g of 1. In particular, it has to attain the point 0. In other words, g must have at least one zero. So g is continuous. on 0 comma 1. Yeah, I forgot to say f is continuous, it's differentiable as much as you want. So g is continuous on 0 comma 1. So by the intermediate value theorem, new theorem, since we know that 0 is in the interval at g of 1 comma g of 0. 0 is in between the attained values. g of x equals to 0 must have at least one solution. Solution x. In other words, remember our function g. That's f of x minus x. So we get that f of x minus x equals to 0 has at least one solution. In other words, f of x equals to x has at least one solution. So without even you know, doing the derivative thing, without even using the assumption about the derivative, You've really shown that any function with this property from 0 to 1 has, must cross the line y equals to x at least once. So f must have at least one fixed point. I don't mean to be rude, haha, but I value our friendships. So let me actually do my part of the job and talk about the mean value theorem. So let's show that we have at most one solution. Solution. In other words, let's show that we cannot cross that line twice. And so to show something as at most one solution, usually you do it by contradiction. And you suppose, suppose you have at least two solutions at least two solutions, A and B. So A not equal to B. So suppose we have that F of A equals to A and F of B equals to B for some A not equal to B. Again, in our interval, it's in uh, 0 comma 1. Well, we have f of a and we have f of b, and we know information about the derivative, so there's really just one thing to use. It's the mean value theorem. So by the mean value theorem, it's by the mean value theorem, What does it say? It tells you that the average value, I guess, of f, f of b minus f of a over b minus a, because the average change equals to the instantaneous change at some point. So f prime of c for some c 
in A comma B. All right, but what is f of B? That's B. f of A, that's A. So you get B minus A over B minus A equals to f prime of C, and therefore 1 equals to f prime of C. And notice, so far we have not used our assumption about the derivative, but now remember that we assume that f prime is never equal to 1 by assumption. And therefore, we get 1 is not equal to 1. Well, and at least on Earth, that's a contradiction. A contradiction with what? Contradiction with the fact that we have at most at least two solutions. And therefore, this equation cannot have at least two, two solutions. And therefore, it has to have at most one solution. What we have, we have f of x equals to x has at least one solution, one solution, at most one solution, and if we put them together, we get it has exactly one solution. Ta-da! How neat is that? And in fact, what I really like about this problem, it has lots of neat applications because an analog of that is also valid in uh, higher dimensions. For example, if you have a function from the unit ball to the unit ball, it must have a, uh, at least one fixed point. And it's kind of cool, maybe an application is, I don't have black pens, red pens ball here, but Imagine you have a snow globe and you're shaking that snow globe. It turns out there's one lonely one that will actually never change positions in the end. In other words, assuming there's a continuum of snowflakes in it, there'll be one snowflake whose initial position equals to the final position. And I'm mentioning that because snow globes were invented in Vienna and you should definitely ask Black Pen, Red Pen what he thinks about snow globes. It's kind of a funny story. <laughs> That's one thing, and also, you know, suppose there's some hurricane that puts everyone on Earth, like shuffles everyone around on Earth. It turns out that also, you know, I think, unless it's a linear hurricane or something, uh, so you, some person does get back to where he started from. And also, the cool thing is, if you have a map of the Earth, a flat map, another consequence is, there's some point on the map that points exactly to where my finger is pointing at. And that's also a consequence of fixed points. Or if you watch yourself in the mirror, and there are like infinitely many mirrors, there has to be one point that really goes through all of those mirrors. Lastly, if you want to show that ODEs have uh, at, at least one solution, let's say y prime equals to f of y has at least one solution, well, in fact, you can write this as a fixed point problem because by integrating and assuming that y of zero equals to zero, you can write this as this, in other words, you have this operator, let's call it i of y, y equals to i of y, and if you can show that somehow this operator has a fixed point, then it gives you a solution to your ODE. And so fixed points are really cool, and in particular, they're a great application of the mean value theorem and the intermediate value theorem. And if you like this quick calculus topic and want to know more about math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.